you see so when the sun reaches the mid heaven it reach, reaches the arch of his glory and the sign before cancer is Gemini the twins they are the two pillars you see when Hercules the pillars of Hercules are at the June 21st summer solstice and you see so that is the peak of the mountain that is the, the high point of the sun's journey and so the houses adjacent to this point are to dealing with the ninth house is dealing with uh, religion, fate, long journeys, dreams, visions, learning, travel and on the other side you have fame, career, honour, dignity, profession, authority, glory, power, distinction. That's the mid-heaven. So what I'm going to be um, <clears throat> sharing in the presentation, and by the way, please um, check it out. It'll be uploaded in a couple of days. And then there will be two more subsequent ones in the series dealing with astrotheology and occult science. So um, they'll be up within the next, oh, I'd say the next month, maybe five weeks, because there's a bit of editing to do. And I'm just finish, finishing the editing notes today to have this first one uploaded by tomorrow. But I would love to share also some, some good news with you that um, I've now um, been asked to have a show on American Freedom Radio. And I did my first uh, show yesterday at uh, 2 o'clock at 2 o'clock Australian time. <laughs> I'm sure it's 2 o'clock. But anyway, you can, you can check the, the station. And um, please tell people get the word out because um, for American Freedom Radio to have me have a show on their network speaks a lot about how much this station is wanting to get the truth out there and how much they are pre prepared to bring spiritual sanity and hermetic wisdom to the world by giving me a weekly show and if not more and I can take a second if I, if I choose to. And that's two hours a week of hermetic wisdom and, and syncretic hermetic wisdom because syncretism, which is what I am following on from the work of the Renaissance guys, well, I'd have to be. I mean, I'm doing the same thing. So it, it's just, um, just natural that what I'm doing is syncretism. But syncretism suggests that the whole is fragmented. Otherwise, why would you need to syncretize the sciences and the philosophies and the schools of wisdom and the religions and the theologies? Well, because they've, ob they've obviously been um, divided and chopped up and fragmented. So syncretism brings back the whole. And when you see the graph and you understand the sun's nature, you see, there it is, the story and the Gospels are all hiding there and the Bible and all the holy books are just telling that very same story. Um, so here is what Firmicus Maternus says in his third book. He says um, in his third book, uh, verse 18, In the chart of the universe, which we have said was invented by very learned men, the MC is found to be in Aries. This is because frequently, or rather always, in all charts, the MC holds the principal place. Oh, thanks, David. There's the American Freedom Radio uh, website. Thank you very much. This is because frequently, or rather, uh, always in all charts, the MC holds the principal place. Now, do you understand what principal means? Principale is the head. The first, the prince. Prince, principe is the first, the principal. 
So that is where Aries is. So they understood this. And if man is the measure of the universe, then that is the same as in the heavens. And then when you look at the heavens and the zodiacal man, Adam Cadmon, you will notice that where he starts at Aries on the horizon on the 21st of March, there is the head of Aries, the ram, and then following that is Taurus, and just six degrees of Taurus, in six degrees Taurus is to be found the Pleiades, that beautiful cluster, that crown, the jewel, which is actually coming up in the east now. You go out at nine and ten o'clock this evening, wherever you are in the world, look to the east. If you're in the northern hemisphere, you need to look southeast. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you need to look northeast. And there you will see on the horizon coming up, you'll see the Pleiades. I was, I was watching them last night and um, I haven't seen them for, uh, for, for months since they went over the other side. Three or four months ago. You see, they all disappear for 72 days. All the stars. You lose them in the west and then they return in the east 72 days after. 70 or 72 days. And um, that's one-fifth of 360 degrees. But if you look out and you notice um, the Pleiades, look north and you will see Jupiter tonight and for three months you will see Jupiter in the northern skies. And he is the brightest shining orb in the heavens right now. There is nothing quite like it. And in fact, and in the west, in the early hours of su after sunset, you'll see Venus, and she's beautiful. We have the best skies right now, and the best stars in the skies. And um, another thing to consider is the fact that Uranus is in Aries, and his son Saturn is in Libra, the uh, sign of the exaltation of Saturn. So that would mean that Uranus, Saturn, Saturn's daddy, is exalting in Aries and his son Saturn is exalting in the, the constellation of Libra which corresponds to the kidneys. And uh, this is the justice that is going on in the world. You will notice that uh, a lot of heads are rolling, corporate heads. Governments are changing, tumbling. Economies are being judged and condemned. <laughs> it's just all burning up. And that's because of as above. You see, as above, Uranus. He's going to be there for 14 years in the sign of Aries. And Uranus is um, freeing. He is the eighth sphere. And Uranus in... Um, in Greek, coincidentally, means heavens. <laughs> so the heavens, Uranus, are in the heavens, Aries. Whereas Saturn, he's down in hell, in Libra. And that's where he exalts. So we're living in interesting times. Uh, if you pay attention to, uh, to those orbs, and of course remember that Pluto is in Capricorn. So Capricorn, where Capricorn corresponds to the uh, tenth house we were talking about before, where honours happen and glory and distinctions. Well, that would be because Saturn rules Capricorn. You see, in Saturn's the old man, the grey-haired one, and Saturn wants honours and reverence, and he wants a Sabbath day after his name, so he gets Saturn day, the Jews. They have their holy Sabbath day on the day of Saturn, the seventh day. And um, <clears throat> this is because Saturn has that um, the, the scythe in his hands. He's uh, old man Kronos, you see. Um, anyway, 
Firmicus Maternus says something very interesting at the end of this paragraph. It's very interesting. Where he says that um, we learn from very learned men that the MC is to be found in Aries. The midheaven is to be found in Aries. This is because frequently, or rather always, in all charts, the MC holds the principal place. And from this we deduce the basis of the whole chart, especially since most of the planets and the luminaries take note. The sun and the moon send their influence toward this sign. All the luminaries, the five luminaries and the sun and the moon send their influence to this sign, Aries. You see, that's what astrology is all about. It's about the waxing and the waning of the sun from summer to winter and from daytime to nighttime and the waxing and the waning of the moon from full moon to new moon and the waxing and the waning of the planets. Because there's one that people don't consider um, very often, isn't it? That the planets are also waxing and waning. Yes, Jupiter exalts in Cancer. Pisces exalts, uh, sorry, Venus exalts in Pisces. The Sun exalts in Aries. We've learnt that. We've learnt that in, in my videos how the sun, when it comes out of Pisces and is born in Aries, exalts. That's the sign of the sun's exaltation because now the sun has returned into the, the glory, the glorious spring and summer seasons. So not only does the sun exalt and, and of course the moon exalts in Taurus, so does Jupiter, so does Mars. Mars exalts in Capricorn. Mercury exalts in Virgo. What that means is that they, their maximum influence is affected in those signs. So they are waxing and waning. So we have seven orbs, seven orbs in the solar system that are waxing and waning. And these are controlling everything that happens in the solar system, these waxings and wanings. So... Um, what I'm going to be doing for the next, uh, we've got another 30 minutes.